realists. But let us start with the first speaker, Hans Labohm, who is an economist and the author of a book called Tinkering with Capitalism, The Intellectual Roots of Neoliberal Revolution. I wasn't sure if they ever had any roots at all. Um, he has He's been a guest researcher and advisor to the board of Klingendal, the Dutch Institute for International Relations. He's an expert reviewer of the IPCC, that's an intergovernmental panel on climate change, and, and a member of the NIPCC, uh, that's got an N on the front to distinguish it from the IPCC, which is a non-governmental international panel on climate change. And he, he definitely doesn't believe that the climate of the world is being changed by human agency. So please welcome first Hans Labohm. Well, thank you, Nick. <clears throat> what is a climate skeptic or a climate realist? It is not a person who is anti-green. It is not a person who is advocating wasting natural resources or energy. It is not a person who denies the climate. How could you deny the climate? The climate is there. A very stupid thing to deny the climate. But it is a person who believes that there is no climate crisis. You have heard about the climate crisis. You have been brainwashed about the climate crisis for many decades. You are here all brainwashed for many decades. You have never heard the alternative story. Probably many of you have never studied a scientific journal with alternative views on the development of climate. Climate change, innocent word. Uh, is there climate change? Yes, of course there is climate change. Climate has been changing always and will always be changing. But the question is, where a mankind with the emission of CO2 because of use of fossil fuels exercises a substantive impact on the climate and especially worldwide temperatures. Now, first the bad news. You all know, because of the media and because of the movie of Al Gore, that there is global warming and that this warming is accelerating you all know that sea level is rising and that sea level rise is accelerating. That countries like the Netherlands run the risk of being swamped by the sea, so Amersfoort at sea, in a relatively short period of time. You know that Tuvalu and uh, other islands, the Maldives, are also running the risk of being swamped by the ocean. You know that millions of plants and of animals are risking to be extinct because of global warming. You know that the polar caps are melting. And you know that all scientists agree and that the science is settled. Now, that is the bad news. Now, the good news is that none of these statements, not a single one, is true. You can check it. It has been published. The statistics. You can find it on the internet. First of all, there is no global warming. Over the last 10 years, there has not been any global warming. There is a stabilization and decline of temperatures. That has been hidden for us, as is now becoming clear uh, with Climate Gate, as you know. The Climatical Research Unit of the University of East Anglia has been hacked, and the hackers have revealed more than 1,000 emails of correspondence between the scientists at the University of East Anglia and their colleagues on the other side of the ocean. And from these, hacker, from these emails, it has become clear that these people are manipulating raw data, are refusing their colleague, colleagues, scientists, access to, to uh, their, uh, their uh, data. I could take uh, a question, yes? Um, in regards to the hacking, they... 
Under the, under the Oxford rules, the opposition is allowed to make a, a point of objection. Here it is. You only have 15 seconds. Okay, point of objection. This happened a week ago. A lot of those emails were taken out of context, and at, in a week, no one can review thousands of pages of research data and make a claim about it. Thanks. Uh, these emails were not selectively taken from the emails which were there. there were 1,057 emails, so no selection at all. Emails have been studied in different places. The um, people who wrote the emails have confessed or have uh, said that they have indeed written those emails. There's no question about the fact that these emails are genuine. And there are many people around the world, scientists, who are now analyzing the emails and the other documentation. And of course, uh, not much has been known, but the most important things have been published in the British newspapers, in the American newspapers. And I assume that these press reports are correct. Now, uh, about the mass extinction of um, these, uh, all these animals and plants, uh, nonsense has not been uh, confirmed in scientific literature about sea level rise. Most people do not know that sea levels have been declining over the last few years. The reason is not very known. As far as the melting of the uh, polar caps, um, yes, uh, there are uh, very trustworthy statistics which show that over the last 30 years, the sea ice coverage so the sum of sea ice coverage of the North Pole and the South Pole has been stable over a period of 30 years. So uh, all these things point at a, well, a riddle for those who believe in man-made global warming. Now, there are alternative views. There are alternative scientists, astrophysicists and geologists, and they also study climate. And they come to the conclusion they expect that we will not be heading for a new warming period, but they expect a new cooling period. Uh, they call it, in their jargon, a Dalton minimum, which is a period which uh, occurred in the beginning of the 19th century, or a Monde minimum, which was even colder, that is from uh, 1645 to 1715. They expect a colder period. Now, as an economist, I say, well, here there are people who expect warming. Here there are serious scientists who expect cooling. There is no consensus in science. Where should I base my policy on? There's no rational basis for policymaking at the moment. We should study further. And later on, when the uh, discussions have taken place, and when, when there is more consensus on various schools of scientists, then we make political decisions, and not in Copenhagen. By the way, Copenhagen will be a failure. It will not end as a fiasco. It will already start as a fiasco. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. That was a very admirable exposition of the don't worry, I'm Dutch and my feet aren't wet yet school. <laughs> um, we're going to go to the first 